What's up y'all and welcome back. So today we're gonna to be talking about emergency funds. Emergency funds and how much you should have saved. And first I wanna say like no one can tell you this magic number that's just automatically gonna work for you because we are all living different lives. I know there's the debate over $1,000, $10,000, $5,000, but once again, everything is going to depend on, you know, the factors that are making up how much you need in your life. and. It's also gonna depend on what's again your expenses, your liabilities, as well as your comfort level. Some people are needing extra money to feel safe and secure, and some people can just thug it out with like the bare minimum. Um, it's all just going to depend on you. But in this video, we are gonna be going through an example just so I can show you a couple of ways you can calculate how much you need for your emergency fund based on your expenses. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna scoot over so I can do my little pop up. These are the expenses that we're gonna be working with. Okay, so we've got our rent, our auto loan, water, electric, auto insurance, renter's insurance, cell phone, and internet. So when I came up with this example, I'm thinking more so like, you know, single person, just to keep it basic so we're not getting into the weeds of things, like if we have kids and things like that. Um, but for the most part, you know, basic necessities. You don't have to include all of your expenses when you are calculating your emergency fund amount, just the ones that you need to be able to live like your comfortable, regular life outside of the the lattes and the matches. Now, if you wanna take like just the, the lazy way out, you can add up all of your expenses um, and just use that total as your starting amount. So whatever your expenses are for the month that are essential, we're not adding in our non-essentials, our personal funds or expenses, just those essentials, and then use that amount as your starting point. So in this example, that means that we need to have at the very least, let's see how much we need to have saved. All right, so at the very least, we need $2,090, might as well make it $2,100 as our emergency fund amount. And now the goal is not to leave it at one month, I will say, at least try to get it two to three times that monthly amount, but I know like times are hard, okay? This economy is insane right now, or at least it feels like that in my opinion. I have never experienced this before, this level of adulting, um, but just to keep you from like spiraling out of control whenever you look at these amounts, just stick to that one month right now and then work your way up to month two and then month three and then just keep it at that especially if you don't have a lot of expenses and or liabilities you should be pretty safe at that amount i know people say you know get to one year's worth but like i said before this economy is not playing like it's not playing any games people are literally trying to keep their heads above water and i'm not that person that's going to be like you know you need to put back twenty thousand dollars and not tell you you know how you can do that or even if it's realistic for you in this situation right now so girl just keep it at two to three months now if you're like me and you need to have a little bit more specificity is that a word to be more specific um you're gonna need to identify your liabilities like this is the one thing that really kicked my butt whenever i was just trying to work my way up to the you know, normal $1,000 amount that people say to start with, which is amazing. And I will say that if you are in the beginning stages of trying to learn about your finances, that $1,000 is an accomplishment in itself. But the liabilities will soon creep up on you. And I am talking about those expenses that produce more expenses. So when you list out your expenses and the monthly amount that you are paying for this expense, you wanna go through each expense and identify which one is a liability or has the potential to be a liability and which one is not. Because for those that have the potential to produce more expenses, you're gonna to need to factor in an amount for those two. Like it's not just enough to have enough for your car payment because if your car starts croaking, you know, it starts doing a little cough, a little jig, then 
it doesn't these people don't care that your car is in the shop you're gonna have to pay for that auto loan payment and you're gonna need to pay for the repairs at the same time so obviously from our example our car is the liability if you have a house you're a homeowner your home is a liability whether you want to own up to it or not in my opinion i feel like you know it it is a liability if something goes down you're on the hook for it even if you have insurance like especially if you have a high deductible plan uh you are on the hook for it if you have children you know those your kids have the potential to produce more expenses for you so you're going to need to factor that in as well so for each expense that has the potential to be a liability you're going to need to figure out what a typical pop-up expense would be for that and if you have had that experience you know you got something to work off of what was that a pop-up expense and what was that amount because you're going to need to factor that in so in this example let's say on average a car repair is five hundred dollars okay our car is fairly new so we're feeling confident that we're not going to need all of these repairs for a long time so we feel okay once again comfort level adding in that five hundred dollars to our $400 auto loan payment. So that's gonna be $900 that we need to up that amount to or up that amount by 500 because instead of 400, we're making it 900 for the auto loan. Um, now, if your car is like my Mazda was, rest in peace, Miss Mazda. If you know, you know, uh, then Old Faithful may not be as reliable as a new car so that amount is going to be a lot higher for you because your car has the potential to croak and then cost you thousands of dollars when it comes to a major repair so we want to take the worst case scenario route and this is coming from someone that does not like to think about worst case scenarios or what ifs what ifs what ifs because that can really hang you up and give you analysis paralysis makes it to where you don't even want to do anything but when it comes to something like this take the worst case scenario route to CYA before it happens so what major mechanical issue could go wrong be realistic with your car how old it is how you've maintained it so let's say maybe it's the engine that we're thinking may croak soon and the average cost of an engine repair is like five thousand dollars do not scream at me and log off this video because <laughs> i know that is a lot of money it's like girl you want me to add about five thousand dollars to this already three thousand dollar amount that you're telling me to add just a minute because that's a nice chunk of change yes once again so this is where your comfort level is going to come in let's say that maybe you just feel okay with only adding five hundred dollars more right based on what you think could go wrong with the car based on the life expectancy of the car and once again how you've maintained it so maybe you're okay with just adding in that $500 buffer, the original 500 that we were talking about, adding it in as a buffer. And you're like, it's just going to have to work. And you should feel proud of yourself. This is the way I make it work in my head. Like I feel proud of myself and nobody can make me feel bad because I only opted to put an additional $500 back because I put money back number one and I put extra money back for a potential expense for this expense. So I'm winning at the end of the day, even if I don't have enough, I'm winning and I did what I could with what I had. And so let's say that is it for you. If you're someone else that's kind of paranoid, dealing with anxiety, you're like, mm -mm, I need to feel a little bit more secure. Maybe, secure, maybe you can add an additional $1,000 to this auto loan just for peace of mind, okay? It is completely up to you. When it comes to your money, yes, you can watch videos of people telling you what you should do or what you could do. But at the end of the day, I just want you guys to understand that it is completely up to you take what you're learning or take what you're hearing take it back to yourself and do what makes sense for you and your life whatever it is that you want to add extra for that bad boy just add it in and i'm looking at my example here um i think i want i would switch to screen share but i'm probably not going to do that so let me we're gonna do a screen share on my phone so we can work this 
out. All right, so we're just gonna work this bad boy out on the phone so that I don't have to fiddle around with this computer. Um, and sorry, it is so dark out. Hopefully you guys can see me. I did not pick the best shirt. So here we have our rent. Is this a liability? I'm going to say no. So I'm gonna say this isn't a liability because we have renter's insurance. Is insurance gonna cover everything? No, and once again, going back to comfort level, depending on what your deposit, uh, your deductible is, you can save your deductible. So you have the option to save your deductible if you would like. Because you never know. All right, next we have our auto loan which we've already determined that is probably in this list our number one liability uh, and we decided we're going to add just an additional thousand dollars so that is going to make it fourteen hundred dollars for us for this expense water is not a liability electric is not a, a liability that's a utility um auto insurance no renter's insurance no cell phone and internet we're good to go on that so i will say depending on what else you have in your life that could potentially be a liability add it in here even if it's not typically something that you would have in your budget so here let's say we're a cat mom or dad we have a cat and if you have a pet then you know when you get a pet I, the way i see them they're like little souls like they're like little people but the divine created them as animals and i'm not that person where we're, when i get a pet i used to be i will say right hand of god before i actually got a pet i'm like if that thing gets sick that thing just gets sick you know it is what it is but now that i have my pet i'm like no you know this is my baby this is my responsibility i got this pet it is my responsibility it is my family member so if this pet gets sick I need to do what I need to do to get the pet the proper care. So, yes, your pet is a liability because, you know, they can chew a sock and then you'll wind up with a thousand dollar vet bill. So let's say that we are going to add our cat and those vet bills are nasty. I have a, a pet insurance policy for my cat. Because once again, some people may think I'm extra, but once again, I don't want to get hit with a huge vet bill. I want it to be capped, you know. I don't know if they're contracted with vets, but I do know that if I pay my deductible, I want someone to el someone else to help me, you know. And once again, my cat is my responsibility. If she gets sick, I'm going to have to pay for her. So I'm going to say we're going to add $500 because we're already getting a little pricey uh, when it comes to these expenses. So we're going to add in $500 for the potential of our cat getting sick. Okay, I had to get my my thumbnail in. So let's see. Originally, it was two thousand ninety dollars. I don't know why I thought it was closer to three thousand, but I think it was two thousand ninety. Yes, it was. So we are at two thousand ninety before all the add-ins. We decided we're going to add an additional one thousand dollars to our emergency fund for the auto loan portion and now we're adding in an extra $500 for our pet because pets do get sick okay and pets are deserving to be treated as well they deserve medical treatment from a cat mom so we're at $3,590 to start off with if we want to be a little bit more specific so remember before um, if we did not have anything added in as a buffer we would be at $2,090 if that sounds better to you rock with it but if you want just a little bit more added in for your specific expenses $3,590 it is getting darker and darker okay so this will help cover your monthly expenses as well as any add-ons but once again this is the starting amount whatever amount that you calculate i will say if you don't have an emergency fund um with a, at least a thousand dollars in it 
you want to start with one month's worth of whatever it is that you calculate based on your expenses and your car uh, your comfort level and then work your way up to once again two to three months we're not going to go six months out we're not going to go 12 months out if you have the funds to do that um then you can do that and that is amazing but if you are starting out we are just going to narrow our focus because it is extremely easy to look at an amount that you need and then start spiraling because if we times this by two girl we're at seven thousand dollars so just imagine time timesing that by three if you already don't have anything saved and you are trying to get to like two three months off top you are going to be spiraling out of control because life is going to life regardless whatever it is no one is special in life and as you're saving this money you have to remember that life is still going on and things are still going to happen it's not if they're going to happen it is when they're going to happen and it may knock you off track for a little while like you may get a pop-up expense um and may have to use some of the funds that you were saving and have to start over to replenish what you just used that is going to happen it's just depending on when but once again the focus or main point is having the money there for that specific purpose and then hopefully getting to a place where you have a system in place you know you've got your income you got your expenses uh budgeted correctly and you can continue to save until you get to that amount or maybe you get a couple of windfalls to help you out but yeah your emergency fund is your emergency fund you get to set that amount based on what you feel comfortable with um and then rock it out start working towards that goal make sure you include it in your budget and get yourself ready mentally to prepare to go to battle with life because don't let it knock you off don't let it knock your head off with the sword be sure to keep reminding yourself and getting yourself right back up because eventually if you keep getting back up, you're going to get to that place you want to go. It's just going to determine like your reaction to things. So I say that from experience. OK, uh, I say this from experience. So I don't want anyone to get discouraged based on the amount that they calculated from this video. You can do it. Keep going. I'm proud of you and I'm going to catch you guys in the next one.